Hi everyone, today's lesson is for Geometry CPM Chapter 1 uh, sections on defining transformations and using transformations to create shapes. Um, what we're going to be doing in this lesson is basically using our transformations uh, to try to create some sort of rhombus or parallelogram, an isosceles triangle, a right triangle, or a kite. Um, there's a lot of uh, different shapes that you can use. Um, just reviewing transformation with your hand. I know you probably figure out which one of those is mine. Um, yeah, I have a weird hand. Anyway, um, just trying to review, hold your hand up like this. And so like if I was asking you to do a rotation, then I would expect you to do something like this, right? Okay. And if I asked you to do a reflection, that might look like this. A reflection. If I asked you to do a dilation, it might, you know, it might go like this, something like that. Um, if I ask you to do a translation, moving it from one place to another, regardless, you know, might be two different steps too. Um, remember, a transformation can also include a couple of steps together, um, several steps actually. And every time we do that, we have our pre-image. And when we move on to our image, you know, that's our, if this was like A, then when I move this to another point or reflect it or do something like that, that's going to be now A prime. Um, and then if I move it again after that, that would be A prime prime. So we talked about um, mapping and uh, symbols for uh, reflections and transformations, etc. cetera. So uh, proper ways to write all of that. Um, so in 1.2.4, what you guys have, you've seen here is rotations on a grid. And what you're looking at is a rotation that could be um, clockwise or counterclockwise, um, whether it goes to the left or to the right is your, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. Also rotation to 180 degrees, right? That's like from here to here, half a circle. Um, so it's really important that you practice these. Um, remember clockwise is going to the right going down and counterclockwise is left as um, going to the starting here and going down uh, down to the right this is going down right this is going like that down I say down left but it's at some point going in the same direction opposite direction for that um, for 180 degrees what they've done is they show you these symbols here and they're saying hey there's a symbol um, one of these you know this is this is telling you we want you to go a certain way. So 180 degrees, you're doing this twice. One's counterclockwise, one's clockwise. Um, 360 degrees all the way around. Um, 270 degrees also. Um, 90 degrees, they're asking you to do that twice um, for counterclockwise and clockwise. And also 180 degrees, they don't, you know, 180 degrees for this one, every one of these, your job is to try to rotate it. Now, what I would expect for you to do is to take your patty paper. And on your patty paper, what you're gonna do is you're going to create an axis, okay? And so as you create your axis, okay, that's gonna look something like that, right? You're gonna have an axis. And on your axis, you're gonna draw this shape. So on your paper that you have, and you would go to the, um, 1.24 resource page that you guys have in your notes, and I do expect you to follow along in that. You take your patty paper and you redraw this shape. So you would draw it, okay, going across. And then what happens then is what you're expected to do is depending on how you are rotating it, right? So this is this first shape. So you need to be able to put your pencil on this graph, on the dot, which is the origin, and which is where you should put that dot, and be able to, once you put it there, rotate it around, whether it's 180 degrees, counterclockwise, clockwise, whether it's 90 degrees, um, whatever their instructions are giving you, they want you to use this patty paper, the tracing paper, to be able to rotate your shape around. So like if I had this shape, which is this shape right here, and I were supposed to move this 90 degrees clockwise, right? It would just be like one click, you know? You just go one click. And then if it said, well, wait, take that and go 180 degrees clockwise, you would go two clicks. So that's, it's basically like that. And so 
you need time to be able to do that. So I would expect you to stop the video at this point, get your patty paper, and work these problems out. Okay, so back, let's say you turned your video back on. So I would then expect you to take these values and see what that is right there is that, um, is that graph, the first one is going uh, clockwise, and so you would move that clockwise 180 degrees, where B is saying go counterclockwise and do it that way. And notice, because it's 180 degrees, you guys, um, 180 degrees, one way or the other, you're ending up in the same place, whether you go counterclockwise or you go, you know, you or you go clockwise, you're ending up in exactly the same place. So 180 degrees is, you know, that's that's not the hardest one you could do. Um, then you've got the 270 degrees, you've got your 360 degrees, the 360 degrees is asking you to do that clockwise, and then check your answers for the next group, which are the 90 degrees, you've got the 90 degrees clockwise. So again, whatever the shape it is that they are asking you to draw, you are basically taking that shape. And when they're asking you to go clockwise, that's going to the right one click, because that's 90 degrees. Okay, so check your answers. Um, talking about rotations again, this is another one of those assignments where it's saying, hey, we're not using patty paper this time, we're gonna use graph paper. And so on your graph paper, you are to complete this um, lesson, just these A parts A, B, and C. And then check your answers as well on 1-82. So this is something as well that these are discovery lessons and you are to try to figure out what it is. But at the same time, I have posted the answers. I want you checking your work. Um, part D, you will notice, does say use tracing paper. So that's not going to change your answer. Your answer, you're going to have the same answer whether it's on patty paper or if it's on graph paper. So we're gonna do a couple of these in class, so like on this video right now. So hopefully if you still have any questions that are clarifying questions, we're gonna go through those. So basically um, for rotation on graph paper, um, I'm going to use patty paper for 180 degrees clockwise about the origin. So what I would expect you to do is to take a moment and I want you to graph this on your patty paper. So as, as you're doing this on your patty paper, okay, what you see is I would plot all the points. So you've got negative three, zero. So you make that point negative three, zero. And then you've got negative four, three. So negative four, go up three. Uh, you have, and then you have for C is negative one, uh, five. And so that's negative one, five. And so what you would do at this point is you'd make your triangle, okay? And so this is this, like I said, this is a lot of discovery. So the, here we go, that's my triangle, that's what it looks like, I should label that. So we've got part A, we've got corner B, or vertice C, anyway, C. And so we have A, B, and C. So from this, what you are to do when you're doing your rotation is you put this, your pencil here, and you put it on some hard surface. And then what you're doing, and probably on the ground, and what you're gonna do is you're going to take this value and you're going to rotate it 180 degrees clockwise, so that's two clicks. So that's gonna go, so what this is, is gonna go one click and then two clicks. And that being that, what I see now is this. This is in this corner down here, okay? Because we started off, let's do this again. We started off like this. And then if we're going clockwise, right, we're going that way. So we're gonna go one click this way, and then do it again, one more click. And so that's gonna give you the rotation on this patty paper. So now we're in this quadrant down here. So looking at that right there, be doing a rotation of 180 degrees, you should be in this bottom corner. That being said, let's look and see what this would actually look like being in this bottom right corner, right? So in doing that, what you would notice, see that's where we're at, right there in that bottom corner. Okay, so let's get the points of where we're at now because this point in the bottom right corner, that would be positive three zero. Okay, so where we're at here, right here in that corner is parentheses three comma zero. For B, it looks like for B, I am at four negative three. 
And then for C, and by the way, these are that's A prime, B prime, and C prime. And I know that they're upside down, but that's because we, you know, rotated it. Okay, and then for C, what you have is a 1, negative 5. So 1, comma, negative 5. So what this is asking me is this. Compare your points. See, we started off with A, which A was at negative 3, 0. B is at negative 4, uh, 3. And C was at negative 1, comma, 5. Well, look at what happened. We started off at negative 1, 5. So if, like, if you make a chart, right? And this is what I did here. It made a chart. If you make a chart, right, you've got A, which is at negative 3, 0. When we moved it and we rotated it around, now A is at 3, 0. B is at negative 4, 3. And now B prime which is where did I put my B prime? There it is right there. This is B. Um, so right here at B prime, I'm going to label that one more time. Here, B prime, right? And this is going to be C prime, and this is my A prime. So B prime is now 4, negative 3, and then C prime is 1, negative 5. So compare these values. See, look, this is negative 1, positive 1, positive 5, negative 5. What is that telling you? Negative 4, 3 is now going to be positive 4, negative 3. And I don't tend to look at the values that um, have the zeros because it's a little bit misleading because zero is neither positive nor negative. So it's a little bit trickier to figure that out. But that's what you're doing is you're taking the opposite of both x and y values. So you should see that your rule, oops, uh oh that your rule here, this value here, for your translation, okay, your rule is for the value of x, y, x comma y, you have negative x, negative y. So when you think about a rotation going back this way, right, when you think about a rotation of 180 degrees, what should come to mind is that whatever x was, now it's going to be negative x or the opposite of that value. So if it was negative, now it's positive. And likewise with y. So the way right you write that, right, is what the value that I started with, x, y, um, now x is going to be the opposite and y is also going to be the opposite. So that's one of those things. you got to remember this. You've got to practice it because literally um, without doing these problems, it's a little bit harder just for me telling you, hey, this is what it is. Instead of you doing it, it helps so much. Okay. Um, so this one is saying rotate this triangle, same triangle, um, 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. Again, you put your point on the origin, okay? So we're going to, so here we go. We got this, I think it's the same problem, right? Yep. So it's the same problem. Now I've got my point here, right? And I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise. So clockwise is going this way. So notice now that my graph is now in quadrant one, right? And so meaning A is now at yeah. zero, three. So if I were to turn this sideways, now A is at zero, three. And so, you know, this is all turned sideways. So you take a minute and do that. What does that look like? You've got A is at zero, three. Uh, B, which was at negative four, three, is now at three, uh, four. And C, which was at negative one, five, when you turn it clockwise, now C is at five, one. Okay, so think about that. So when I turned this on my patty paper, right? So now, let me write these on here. Uh, it looks like that A is now at 0, 3, so that's my A prime. B is at 3, 4, uh, 3, 4, and then that's B prime. And then C prime is at 5, 1. And so putting the graphing this like this, right, you got to come up with some sort of rule, all right, for that. And in, in coming up with this rule, right, in 90 degrees, and this should make sense. Look, right, this was on this axis like this. And when you rotate it 90 degrees, now it's straight up. Okay, so now you've got your rotation. Um, let's just make a chart, okay? 
let's make a chart and see my original points for A was negative 3, 0, for B, negative uh, 4, 3, and for C, negative 1, 5. And so now A prime, I'll use a different color, A prime is going to be 0, 3. B prime is going to be 3, comma 4. And C prime is going to be 5, comma 1. So your job here is to basically say, well, if I started off with x, y, and I did a uh, rotation uh, 90 degrees clockwise, what does that mean? Okay, so look at your values here. What does it mean? So if you were thinking, and just I would pause the video and try to come up with a rule, okay? That's your job. So coming back, um, let's then say, well, what happened? I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna skip A because again, it's got the zero there. Zero being not negative, nor neither negative nor positive, kind of throws you off just a little bit sometimes. Um, let's just look at C. Na if this was X and this was Y, right? And when I go to C prime, what just happened? Y is the same value, do you see that? But it's in the X position. So Y is now here. My one, which is my X value, is over here. But notice that it was negative one, but now it's positive one. So now this is gonna be what we call the opposite of whatever X is, it's the opposite. So we put the negative sign in front of that. Let's see if this works for B. So if we start off with negative four, three, right? Three is my Y, that would mean three is my X now. Negative four, I'm taking the opposite of that value. When I move it over, now it's positive four. So what we've just done is we've come up with a rule, okay, for rotation 90 degrees clockwise. Awesome. Okay, um, this is what we just talked about, and I believe that's all done, okay, and moving on. So there's all kinds of rotations, okay? These are the main ones. You've got the rotations of 90 degrees clockwise. This is what we just did um, right here, okay? This is what we just did, um, y negative x. If I'm the ro rotating counterclockwise, that's gonna give me negative x, or the opposite of, sorry, the opposite of y and then x. Rotating 180 degrees, we already did this one. Um, we had the opposite of x and the opposite of y. Uh, rotating 270 degrees, we had, um, we start off with x, y, we have negative y, x. Um, also, note to self that this one and this one are the same. Also, rotating the 90 degrees and this one are also the same. That makes, that should make sense because you're going clockwise and then counterclockwise, right? And then the 270 is 90 more than 180. All right. Um, so these are translations on a grid. This is 1-83. Excuse me. Um, so we have translations on a grid. Uh, what is a translation? Uh, the normal, the formal name for a slide is a translation. Remember we did this with our hands? We took our hand and we went like that. That's like a translation, okay? Um, remember that translations and transformations are different, of course. Um, a prime, B prime, C prime at right is the result, or below, that should be below, um, is the result of translating triangle ABC. So what it looks like here is we have A, B, and C, and now we've moved it, we've translated it. So, so think about this, all right? If you were to think about this and you're saying, okay, A point A, um, that looks like it's negative four, six. So if my point A is negative four, six, right? And my A prime is, let's see here, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this something, this is a little bit different, right? Something happened. How did I get from negative four to three? So I did something, there was some sort of translation, all right? Um, also for part B, point B, we have negative three, eight. So negative three comma eight, and then we want to know, well, what's B prime? B prime is here, and that looks like, if that's negative six, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, 
two, three, four, five, four, five. All right, so I'm just gonna do those two points for right now. Um, I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna do this right here and I'm just gonna draw over my um, triangle here because what I wanna do is they told me that this was a translation, right? Which basically means I can take my shape and I'm gonna move it so that it gets over to the other value. So think about this. Think about taking this shape here and going, how many values am I moving this, hold on, over, right? Oh, <laughs> I only took part of it, hold on. I have to redo that. Um, how, how am I doing that where I just take this value, I think I think the point is to do it quickly. So I'm gonna go down, over, and up. Okay, that should work. So if I were to take this like this, you have to ask yourself, how, am, how many times am I, what am I doing? I'm going over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I went over seven and then down, because this is my C point, right? And then down one, two, three. So what that looked like was on my X axis, right? I went on my X axis, oops, I went over seven. So basically I'm going X, plus seven, right? I'm moving over and I'm going down. I forgot what I went down. I think I went down three. But that means that if I go down three, right? That means subtract. So we have over seven, because if you're going in the right direction, that's positive. And then going down is negative. So let's check. This could be my rule for my x, y value to get my transformation from a to a prime. So let's see, if I were to take my A point, which is negative four, right? And I were to add seven, okay? What do I get? I get three. Check, that's this value right here. And then if I were to take my Y value, which is six, and for the Y value, I would subtract three. I'm also gonna get three. So this is gonna give me my point, A, my new A value right here, which is three, three. So that's one way to do it. Okay, but we all don't have this little triangle that we can pick up and move, right? So another way, another option for doing this is basically to go, well, negative four plus what is equal to three? Okay, that's an, and then you say, you just like, it's an equation. Add four to both sides, so x equals seven, right? So that means that what I'm actually doing is I moved my value plus seven over. Another option is to find the distance between the two, right? Another option is this. I can take a distance, remember is the absolute value is positive distance from zero. I can take three, right? The absolute value of three, subtract my other value. So three minus whatever that value is. So negative four, three minus negative four is um, plus. So that's gonna be seven and the absolute value of seven is seven. And so that's again, another way to do it. So I can do this a couple different ways. Whichever way makes it easier for you, that's how you're gonna do it. But just note that um, absolutely something that, that's gonna be on the test and the quiz is gonna be something where you have to, you're given a shape here and now it's over here and what did you do to get it over there, okay? All right. Um, so these are different translations. Um, these are just basically saying, oh, this is just using patty paper to do what exactly I just did. So you can answer those questions and um, no problem. All right, so this, we're going into where we're talking about facts about um, isosceles triangles. What you should know about an isosceles triangle basically is that if I were to take this line here and I were to reflect it across our line of reflection like this, right, over here, that value would be here. Also, reflecting this line here would give me this line here. Hopefully I do it better. All right, and so what's happening is this. This line is the same value, has the same length as that line because it's a reflection, right? And it's just this over here, it's just a reflection. Because it has two sides that are equal in size, we call that congruent, same size, same shape. Um, because these two sides are congruent, 
we actually could say that line segment um, AB is congruent to line segment BC, or actually, is this C? I'm gonna call this D. So AB is congruent to BD. And so when you're doing this right here, that means that two sides are congruent. If two sides are congruent in a, in a triangle, we call that triangle an isosceles triangle. That's what we call it. Um, so again, um, there's some other attributes to, or characteristics to an isosceles triangle. Um, number one, we have this length at the bottom. We call that a base, okay? We also have this, this tip up here. We call that a vertex. It's the vertex because it's the point where the two uh, sides of the triangle come together. Um, but realistically, this is also a vertex, and that's also a vertex, meaning we could have um, more than one vertex. We call those vertices. All right. Now, in an isosceles triangle, by definition, two sides are congruent to the other. Two sides are congruent. If you have three sides congruent, it's not isosceles anymore. It's called equilateral, and we've already talked about that um, in a previous lesson. Now, with an isosceles triangle, what also is important to know is that you have the base here. On the base, you have these base angles as well. So these angles are also congruent, meaning the same uh, size and shape, right? Congruent, same size and shape. When I say the word congruent, like this is what I'm saying, um, that symbol for that is this. It's like this little enye above the equal sign. So this means they're congruent, meaning they're exactly the same measure. So if I said that in this triangle, this was 50 degrees, that means, and it was an isosceles triangle with two sides are congruent, and you don't need two slashes every time. I know I tend to do two slashes, but one slash would be fine. That means that the angle opposite the side that's congruent, see that side that's congruent, that angle opposite it, is exactly the same measure as the other angle opposite the other side. So that means that's 50 degrees. So these are both base angles, we call those base angles because they're part of the base, um, are 50 degrees. Now remember, in a triangle, um, we discussed this the other day, the sum of our angles, uh, measuring we measure with protractors, um, is 180 degrees. That being said, 50 plus 50 is 100, which would mean that this angle up top has to be 80 degrees. And we call that our vertex angle because it's, again, attached to those two sides that are congruent. That's like our big angle. Um, just some other see, some other things that um, I just wanted to share with you. You've got, again, another name for these sides that are congruent is sometimes these are called legs of a triangle, okay? We've got our base. We've got our base angles, which are these red values down here. You've got the sides. Now, by the way, it doesn't matter if I use three slashes, four slashes, as long if I'm trying to depict two sides that are congruent, Though whatever sides are congruent, those are the sides that are uh, have the same slashes. Meaning, if I did something like this and I said, hey, that's an isosceles triangle, okay? That side here is equal to this side here. That I could do that showing that that other side is not congruent. Um, now, we have a couple of names for these two with these, isos with these triangles. And I want to try to get this a little bit larger. Um, so we have this one right here, which is just an isosceles acute triangle, meaning this angle here uh, is actually all these angles are less than 90. Um, one option, you know, whatever they are, they're all less than 90. Actually, this right here, this one that we talked about before, this one right here, this is an isosceles uh, acute triangle because all the angles are less than 90 degrees. Um, you could have an isosceles obtuse triangle, which looks like this bottom one down here. I'm gonna try to make that uh, lift up just a little bit. Um, and in that case, what you're seeing here is obtuse, meaning one angle that's larger than 90 degrees. So that means like this would be maybe 100 degrees, but it could still be isosceles because of that. And if this was 100 degrees, and if my base angles, because it's isosceles, are congruent, 
then these angles would have to be 40 degrees because, right, 100 plus 40 plus 40 um, is 180. Um, now, this one is actually called a um, isosceles. It, well, actually, it's not isosceles anymore. If you have three sides that are congruent, I don't know if you can see that, but what that's depicting is three sides congruent. Now, remember what we said. If you have two sides congruent, then the angles opposite those two sides are also congruent. Well, if I have three sides congruent, then all those angles opposite are also congruent. So if that's basically saying, if a triangle has three sides congruent, meaning it's equilateral, remember we talked about that before, then it has to be equiangular as well. Because if you have three sides congruent, then you have to have three angles congruent also. And lastly, um, we're talking about this one right here. If you look at this one, this is called a right isosceles right triangle, which basically means you've got a 90 degree angle. That's what makes it a right angle, okay? And two sides congruent still. All of the ones that are have two sides congruent are isosceles. Now, if this was 90, that would mean that both of these angles here would have to be 45 degrees, right? Because 90 plus 90 is 180. We know that some of the angles in a triangle are 180 degrees. And that would make those other sides, those outside um, angles, 180 degrees. Um, so where I'm at right now with you is we're just doing a little bit of review with the transformation rules. Um, we have something called the line reflection. Now, um, translations right we talked about this the trans if you have a translation right you're going to have a rule either adding or subtracting uh, a value to x and y um, a dilation uh we haven't really got into too much other than that it's what the what it actually looks like um rotations expect you, you should be expected to know those um, and please study those. These are the patterns because on your quiz and on your test, you're going to be asked, rotate this 180 degrees. And you, like, you're like you gonna need to know, hey, I gotta take the opposite of X and I need to take the opposite of Y. Um, a reflection for lines, and remember we did this as well, where we're reflecting something, let's say, across the um, Y axis, right? Well, obviously these aren't points, but that's that's a reflection. And when you're doing that, your X, Y, your X stays the same and your Y changes. So please take a, take a look at these and spend some time practicing um, your line reflections, your translations, uh, your rotations, not so much um, your dilations other than to know what it actually looks like. And so that's it for today. Um, what you guys have to do um, is your assignment for 1.1, 1 .1, uh, let's see here, 1.2.2, 1.2.4, let's see here, yeah, 1.2.4 and 1.2.5. Your job is to do these two pages um, and then check your answers, submit them to Canvas. Um, so I hope, you, I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching.